show to rock. I am your host, Alex, and I am here with Troy Tech. Yeah. How are you guys doing? Yeah, they are. Doing well. Doing well. Good. This is your first um, day of tour, right? Yes. Yes. Why did you choose Iowa and not like in Madison where you're from? Well, we have a, a booking agent. Where did you guys shoot the new play uh, music video? 
it was uh, Gary, Indiana, which is perfect because if you want like a post-apocalyptic setting, Gary, Indiana is the place to go. The whole town is just totally yeah. crazy. Like, really? It's all oh, yeah. The buildings are all falling apart. Yeah. But well, how long did that church been sitting there? Like 69? It's just been sitting there abandoned? Yeah. Kind of I think it's it's in the 70s. Like, yeah. bricks, like giant yeah. bricks it's that just fall. Yeah. Falling. yeah. You no. Know, it it was a month. Building. A month. There's a basketball court on the top of the roof. Jim, that's where we play. A little yeah. dance studio. Like, yeah. I mean, stuff that's like out of a horror movie, like a classic. Yeah, it was pretty They're creepy. all just. Jake, can we, take yeah, yeah. What? can we take a um, trip to this place? Yeah, yeah. Be careful though, because people live there. Your battery's on one bar. Yeah. Um, the, uh, yeah, well, the whole time we were shooting, there were people wandering into our uh, our set. You know, we actually got a permit to film there, you know, because we didn't want to get fucked with. So, um, you know, the whole time we're filming, all these people would come on set, and we had to yell at a couple of kids. Oh yeah, I think one of them ended up in the final cut. Really? Did I, think, they I think someone did. Yeah. Um, at, but yeah, like, and we'd have to be like, uh, excuse me, but we're filming here, and then the guy'd be like, I live here. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, well, there were like holes in the floor that when you look down, you think you'd see yeah. water. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was crazy. Yeah. I believe it. Uh, about a month after we filmed that, like the area where we were standing, uh, the ceiling collapsed. So the guy who filmed it, we were talking about doing uh, another shoot over there, like to get some different camera shots. Yeah. And uh, he went back and took a picture of it and was just like, uh, looks like we there's <laughs> no continuity here because it's just all this rubble where we were standing because yeah. the whole ceiling just came down. It, and that was, I mean, that could have happened while we were there, you know. That's was, scary. Wow, yeah, it was dangerous. But, you know, we, we never flinch. Uh, <laughs> it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. So was it like the guy who shot it, his idea for the yep. location? Yep, he's a photographer, and uh, his name's Stephen Dean. Shout out Stephen Dean. Um, yeah, he, um, you know, we were talking about things that we could do, uh, you know, like quickly, and um, and uh, he assembled a, like a couple of guys to help out with the camera. There's a guy named David Relling, and another guy named uh, Brandon Simmons. Shout out to those guys. Uh, yeah, and they did awesome work. Um, and uh, yeah, he was the one though that uh, showed me pictures of the place. Just like I've been just going here to take pictures. You should. You know, come down here, you know, and then so I kind of came up with this, you know, like which song fits with the theme, and you know, we just, we just all came together. Yeah, we had a, a red and a steady cam, like full body rig, and this like, thing was an awesome setup. That's the that's mm -hmm. awesome. And I had a motion control tracker, and it was nice to shot. Nice. Nice. Yeah, those guys hooked us up, you know, they, they, they used their uh, pro equipment and sensibilities, and you know, the whole thing was just like shoes budget, you know. Um. So, you guys have a song called Rama Astra? Yes. And are out of my memory. That's, I don't know, that's how I pronounce it. Okay, cool. It's another language. Okay, uh, but you guys had three downloads and you bought it to hear this guy. Oh yeah, the beer, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, why did you choose that song to go to beer? Um, the, uh, Cover art is kind of based on Brahma Astra. It's a it's a story of the Bhagavad Gita. I think I pronounced it totally wrong. Wrong. Um, it's a story basically about this sort of aerial battle that happened, and they had this weapon called the Brahma weapon. And it's actually the lyrics of the song are uh, translation of the text. Um, so since the uh, you know the artwork on the beer was you know, that story, we chose that song, it's a free download, and, you know, plus, we like opening our set, that song, a bunch, it's a good, you know, rocking number. Why did you guys decide to do it here? Like, for like, That was something, somebody came up to us, and asked us if we wanted to do, they, uh, own a liquor store, and, uh, they've been doing, like, craft beer.
beer, like, you know, it's got in Chris Welch. Hey, Chris. All the <laughs> Chris. Yeah. He, um, you know, he owned a liquor store, and he was putting out his own craft beers to sell with his liquor store, Trixie's Liquor. And um, one day I was in there, and he was trying to come up with, uh, with an idea for a beer, and, you know, there were a few band beers that he had at the time. There was an Iron Maiden. Uh, a Trooper, I think, was the beer, and uh, Skeleton Witch, a great, great band. Uh, shout out Skeleton Witch. Um, <laughs> we played with those guys a few times. Um, yeah, um, and he's just like, you know, it'd be cool is if you guys did a beer. And I'm like, yeah, we'd totally do a beer. That'd be awesome. So he started asking us, like, what kind of beer do you guys like? So we sat down and figured out, you know, what our favorite beers were mutually, and um, he got a brewer. And Peter Schroeder, <laughs> and the brewer, you know, he, uh, House of Brews. House of Brews, Peter took his recipe to the House of Brews, shout out to Paige, <laughs> the House of Brews, <laughs> and, um, you know, they, they brewed it up, and they had this, this number that they were going after, and, you know, Chris was like, you know, it was 340 bottles, and I was like, that seems kind of low. You know, and he's just like, oh, you know, we do 340 bottles of our other stuff, and it takes, like, months to sell, you know, so that's, you know, it's going to take a while. There's plenty of different beers people can get, and, you know, it just takes a while. <clears throat> so I'm like, okay, you know, whatever. Um, so we brewed the beer, we bottled it, I hand-numbered all the bottles and tried to make it special. And uh, he put it on, you know, for sale. And about a week later, he calls me up, and he's just like, man, we're down to our last case. And, yeah, and I was just like, really? So I put the word out, like, hey, you know, uh, we're down to the last case over here at Trixie's Liquor. And, uh, you know, there was other stores that were, was carrying it, too. So I started calling them, and they were all like, no, we're sold out. And, uh, you know, before long, the, the last case at Trixie's was sold out. And, uh, you know, it just went really fast. So the guy is like, Chris... It's like, man, this was a great beer, um, let's do another one. So we came up with an idea that we're going to do a series of beers now, based on all of our others that we put out, yeah. So, so that's kind of a side project we got going on. <laughs> we sell okay, more beer really than well. we do records. Is this true? Yeah. <laughs> sell more beer? It's, it's easy to sell beer, I guess. Then you should do a bundle where if you buy the beer, you get the music. Yeah. Well, like, yeah. You get, you get like a... We're going to do a sixth beer that's going to be just a single that comes on a seven inch record that is attached to a six pack. So it's like a box set of the beer with its own special song that you, yeah. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, so that's that's ultimately what we're going for. We'll see. If this next beer tanks, they'll probably be like, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't blame them. Your beer careers. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah. Then we'll, we'll start working on getting like a strain. Named after us, our own, uh, Canada yeah. Strain? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Uh, no. <laughs> no! What are you talking no. about? No! I have no, no idea. Well, you know, we're playing Denver in a couple of days. I'm sure there's all sorts of, uh, folks we can talk to. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Are, aren't some, like, some of what you do or all of it called, considered stoner rock, so it'd be fitting. Yeah, we get lumped into the stoner rock genre. Um, we kind of had fun with that a little bit. We, uh, we, because stoner rock is typically pretty straightforward, and we're kind of like, uh, you know, yeah, all over the map a little bit, a little more proggy than, than most, you know, yeah. straightforward stoner rock. So we were like, well, how about stoner thrash? So we kind of made that into a joke. That we we're big into inside jokes. <laughs> so we made a shirt about it. We made a song about it. We did. You know, all the stupid shit about Stoner Thrash and people, I don't know. I actually heard of another band's could like refer to themselves as Stoner Thrash since we put it out there. Like, so that explains it so well. <laughs> <laughs> Rather than, you know, when they're yeah. like, we're like stoner progressive. Yeah, stoner pro. You're stoner pro. Then they just keep like adding more stuff to it because there's yeah. so many categories that they can we're, we're really we're stoner metal with some stoner prog uh, in like <laughs> in there and with a sprinkling of thrash. Stoner yeah. thrash. <laughs> thrash. 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 Yep. yep. Thrash. That's what you can call your uh, cannabis stream. Thrash. Yeah. We're gonna jump to the.
random questions because, well, yeah. we keep going into them anyway. So, um, <laughs> it's what I do when I talk. I'm so like, oh, that reminds me of a question I was going to ask 20 minutes ago. Here we go. Sure, yeah. Okay. First album you ever purchased. Whoa. I think that mine was The Knack. Get The Knack. Mm -hmm. I think mine was <laughs> Motley Crue Shout at the Devil. I think I, I bought two cassettes the day I got a cassette player from I think my grandma who was the Miami Vice soundtrack and, <laughs> and, uh, and Dire Straits Brothers in Arms. Dire Straits. Dire Straits. Yes. Yes. Bart Knopfler. Brilliant. I love it. Alright. Yeah. One song you wish you wrote. Ooh. Rusty Cage, Soundgarden. Ooh. Third Eye by Two. So what's your favorite Skrillex? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't really know that. But, um, uh, Johnny, be good. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm not very good at anything stuff. Like, okay. Um, and probably anything that works in Canada. Fuck <laughs> that. We all answered wrong. What is the most successful song of all time? That's Happy the answer. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. By Brad Bam. <laughs> they don't make royalties off that though, right? I'll just say Michael Jackson Thriller. There you go. There you go. Michael Jackson Thriller. Okay, first one you ever learned to play. Well, I started on drums, so I, I drummed along to Shout at the Devil. Um, so probably Shout at the Devil. That's the first track. I think I learned Kiss Lick It Up. Yeah, there you go. First. That's right. It's really hard to say. There's a of like old standards, but I would say maybe Johnny Cash, um, Ring of Fire, or some some kind of country standard. Nice. Favorite sci-fi movie. Ooh. Uh, Children of Men. Uh, Two thousand one. <laughs> Favorite romance drama? I'm going to go with Fifty First Dates. There you go. That's a good one. That's solid. <laughs> solid, Tony. That's good. I like The Wedding Singer a little better. Wedding Singer? Yeah, The Wedding Singer <laughs> is definitely the best. And Linda, you a bitch! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a good one. My baby's sitter. Plural. Yeah. I like Alien better. <laughs> yeah. Alien still. They're both pretty good. Aliens is, is excellent. Aliens is excellent, but I like the first one a little better. Alright. Best concert you've ever been to. Other than your own, of course. <laughs> I, I just saw Tool last week, and it was the best set list I've ever seen him play, so I thought I could put that right up there. Yeah. Good answer. Good answer. I'm still thinking. It sounds like you're playing um, Family Feud. Good answer! <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> Check the board. Good answer. One time we were breaking your brain says, bing. We were invited to hang out backstage with Clutch and Motorhead one time. And that was my one of my favorite show experiences of all time. So maybe I could use that one. Yeah, that'll work. Now that's, I mean, that's, you can't beat that. One time I, I got a VIP tickets to see Slayer and I got to hang out with them in their sound check. I cool. um <laughs> I was a stagehand for them. Oh yeah? Yeah. Nice. That was fun. I have a picture they wrote um Slayer in the what is that? Um crap, what's the, that game that has little white balls all over and you throw discs. Ski ball? Ski ball, yeah. So it was a ski ball table and they wrote Slayer in the, <laughs> in the solid. Ball. Yeah, it was there for like two days and we kept going in and we're like, hee 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 hee, pictures. Yeah, I guess for me, I, there, I've seen so many amazing concerts, but I, like the one that I was maybe like the most excited, it's probably just the period of time and just everything just was perfect. And it's Nine Inch Nails. It's Nine Inch Nails. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the downward spiral tour, like it was just, it was incredible. Like, I, and I was so 
excited, went with friends, we waited hours before the event. First one's in the door, right up front, and it was just an incredible experience. I kicked them up a few times, there's so much body passing, but it was just, yeah. What about you? <laughs> Me? That would be Seven Dust. I saw them at Woolies here in Des Moines, and like the air stopped working, and I was front row, and we were drenched in sweat, and then they were dumping bottles of water on us because, cool. like, we were, there's no way for us to get out. So we were stuck there, and we're just drenched. Like, by the time I got out, I had to wring out my shirt from sweat and just water. Solid and, fun. Solid like, we were interacting with them, and then um, I think it was Clint threw a pick, and it went down my cousin's shirt. <laughs> my, my cousin, who is nor my move. normal um, camera bitch, she has monstrous boobs. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Meg knows this. We said all yeah. She has monstrous, yeah. monstrous breasts. So yeah. when they like, yep. they just went right in. So you don't they want to lay like, off the leash. You just snap it as Jeff on old right. Basically, <laughs> so monsters, man. So she starts laughing. He starts laughing. They fist bump, and then it becomes a game on if they can get him down my shirt and her shirt. So then oh my god. We were we were, we left with like eight picks. But like, it was so much fun because Seven Dust has such good energy when they're on stage. And yeah. They interact with everybody, and no sure. matter where you're at, and you feel it, it's so much fun. And those guys have been hit that hard for many, many years. Oh, yeah. I saw them actually uh, back in Madison, uh, Clutch Open for them. It was a long time ago. Yeah. Elephant Riders. Yeah. They're good. Very good. Very good. Uh, weirdest thing you have ever been asked to sign? I know it's weird. <laughs> a prosthetic limb. I've heard that one a lot, actually. That seems to be yeah. common for yeah. some reason. Um, but I don't think that's the weirdest. Hmm. I've been asked to sign a scroll. Yeah? <laughs> what? I didn't. <laughs> Jake's what is saying? No, I, I, I didn't do it. The guy, you know, he's very, you know, free with his stuff. So, you know, he's like, hey, man, sign my scroll. <laughs> and it's stretched out. And I'm like, dude, like, that looks painful. <laughs> I'm not signing that, but yeah, that, there's a lot of acid involved in that. So, probably. 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 Didn't sign a scroll. <laughs> <laughs> but I was asked. I'm just going to go with prosthetic one because I can't think of anything else. And one of our albums. <laughs> <laughs> Truthfully, yeah, I'm not having a only signed albums or posters, so actually nothing. I mean, tits aren't weird, right? No. That's <laughs> kind of blasé. Boy, another boob. Here you go. Has any fan <laughs> ever said that? Oh no, another boob. No, I don't think so. This guy just did. I just. <laughs> but seriously, like. No, no, no I, did, I obviously it's not serious. So man, you gotta play it up. Play it hard to get. Right? Oh no, another no, boob. No, 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 not no, another no, boob. No, Please, no boobs. No boobs. No. I'll sign here. Away with the boobs. <laughs> I'll shave them if you do. Okay, do you guys have a pre show ritual? <sighs> kind of. He writes a set list and I grumble about the set list. What he selected. He doesn't for us like to play. play what I tell him to play. <laughs> so if you start changing it by playing a different guitar, sometimes. sometimes <laughs> like it's, it's, it's not on purpose though. Yeah. Yeah. No. You just feel like you need to play it? <laughs> well, I try to play it. But sometimes I'll just, like, I'll forget it's there and I'll just start playing a song because we used to not use set lists for, at all. Most of the time, time, most of the time we don't. We don't even practice with set lists. We just jam. And so that feels right to me when I'm on stage. So when there's a set list there, I get a little bit psyched out. Like, oh, what's next? And, you know, I get a little quiet between the songs because I'm, like, kind of... But then on our end, I like, 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 keep on the like, What's going on? You're like, okay. fuck. It's cool. I love it. Uh, especially when you're playing shows when you only have 30, 35 minutes. And our songs, you know, they can go from 2 minutes long to 12 minutes long. Yeah. So 35 minutes, we could play 2, 3 songs, or we could play 6, 7 songs. Yeah. So for me, I just I don't want to, I want to know. I don't want to waste time on yeah. the stage. You want to cram as many songs in there as possible. Fuck yeah. I just want to play one song and be like, thank you, good night. <laughs> we can do that. That's fine. <laughs> like like Cheryl did on Archer Vice when she played at the old opera. Yeah. I watched Archer way too much now. <laughs> I've never watched that show. No, I, I like Archer. I like the last season. I thought the last season was weak. Yeah, yeah this season's a lot.
lot better yeah, than you are one. Okay. And yeah. Rick and Morty is where it's at. Yeah, that's what it's at. Yeah. Rick and Morty. It's mind blowingly good. Rick and Morty, Rick and Morty all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so that would be your guys' favorite cartoon. That's what I think. Yeah. Favorite thing yeah. On the planet. Right? <laughs> I wouldn't blame you. It's so good. It so much. It's next level shit. Different every time. It's, yeah. It's a cartoon written for people who want to go a different level. There's so many different stories and just layers to the whole stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's brilliant. It's incredible. It's absolutely brilliant. Mm -hmm. and, so, and it's fun. There's a lot of Belgium. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's a lot of Belgium. Uh, highly recommend it. <laughs> okay. We're going to go with the last question. What piece of advice would you give other bands? Stick with your dreams. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, you know, I don't think I'm a good guy to give advice. I mean, we just kind of started doing what we do and just kept doing it. And, you know, like all these other bands are kind of following trends and, you know, like yeah. sticking with the band, then quitting, and then going on to become successful in some sort of career. <laughs> Here we are just still doing what we're doing. Families, like yeah. all that kind of thing. I mean, if you play, if you, my advice would be is if you enjoy doing it, just keep doing it. Yeah. Do it the best you can and have yeah. fun and try not to put too many expectations on yourself and everything else kind of just falls in line and everything crazy after that. I mean, getting to play live is really kind of a privilege, you know. It's, it's like every time I go on stage, I have shitload of fun because I don't know if it's the last time we get to do it so I mean to play act like a jackass and have fun and make faces at him <laughs> yeah and, uh, that's what we do I mean, you know, so my advice is just keep doing whatever you're doing and do it as best you can yeah. and have fun and enjoy it because you might not be able to do it I've been in a lot of other bands that never got anywhere near the kind of opportunities that we've had as a band and you know like thinking back to those bands it's just kind of like you gotta work with the right group of guys. You know, it's gotta make sense. Everybody's gotta be on the same page. So I think, I guess, maybe that would be some good advice is to, uh, you know, be friends with who you work with. Don't just settle for some guy because he has a bass. You know, if you guys don't really have a lot in common, you know, hang out or, or play bass or, or play music with uh, someone you just hang out with. You know, Tony and I started hanging out before we started jamming, really, you know. Um, and I've known Darwin for many, many years before uh, he joined our band. He booked our first show ever, as a matter of fact, yeah. Tony and me. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of crazy. I was a big fan for a long time. Cool. <laughs> he got us on our first record label, now, too. Now I live a nightmare every day. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, yeah, he was just laying the groundwork, man. Darwin's from the future. He fucking knows this shit. He's like, man, I want to join Druid's Tech. So he fucking came back back to pass. Fucking was like, here we go. You, you, you hooked it up, man. It's a time trap. Another great uh, science fiction movie. It was Looper. You like that movie? I did. I, like that movie. I did like Looper. I didn't like That's the one with Bruce Willis and yeah. the old. Um, alright, alright, alright. Elysium. Dude. You guys gotta give it a sci-fi. Ex Machina. Yeah, that's good. Really good. Ex Machina is good. Jake? Event Horizon. Right, yeah, yeah, that's a great fucking That is a good one. Yeah, I was like, what one was that? Yes! I liked Event Horizon. Sam Hill is great, man. Oh, yeah. He's creepy as shit. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. It's like kind of a, it's like a sci-fi horror film. Yeah. It's really good. Like yeah. Alien, the original. Not like Aliens, which is sci-fi action. Yeah, well. Stop that aliens too. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Alien have... three is awesome. Mm -hmm. You know what's great? Is I got the DVD set. <laughs> the and what Alien Three, like what happened with that is it was a franchise and they were very um, like involved and, and David Fincher directed Alien Three. And it, David Fincher has his own vision. You know, he's a visionary director, he's done some amazing films. Zodiac, awesome movie, Fight Club, Killer. Um, anyway, they were fucking with him too much. He gave him his cut of the film, and they were like, no, oh, it's gotta have this kind of ending, and they reshot the ending, and, you know, they, they were fucking with him. Uh, so David Fincher just was like, you know what, fuck you guys, I'm out. And, uh, Alien 3 
was released. It wasn't very critically acclaimed. It was kind of, uh, you know, eh, whatever. Um, but, you, you know, David Fincher went on to be such a great, uh, a well-known director. And, you know, they decided when they put out the DVD, they're like, well, you know, David Fincher, we can probably sell this thing if we release the David Fincher cut. So if you get that DVD set, you can see the David Fincher version of the film completed. They added all the special effects in there, and uh, it's, it's pretty cool. I like it. <laughs> you need to watch that one. It's good. I have seen it. Oh, you have seen it? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you see the David Fincher one? Watching your eye too. You did? <laughs> Do it. It's good. I love it. Jake, Great concept. It's dark. Jake it's dark. definitely knows movies. Like, if we wanted to make, we could do a whole, like, interview where we just talk sci-fi movies. And, well, he, his expertise is more in the horror section. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he's seen both, like, really good and really bad. I think you have close to seeing them all. All right, all right. Pretty much. So, Aliens is your favorite alien movie. Yes. What's your least favorite part of Aliens? Because I got the answer right here. <laughs> Don't talk. Newt. The little girl. Mm. She's so fucking irritating, man. You know? They mostly come out at night. Mostly. Yeah, mostly. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Alien 3. First scene. Newt's dead. Fucking awesome. And your heart, <laughs> and your heart cheered for a second. I was like, that's great. It's so, this, you know, it, it's, it was a great concept. I, I loved how they did it, man. No apologies. Just fucking get rid of Newt. You know, that would have been cool if, uh, you know, they got rid of the Ewoks. You know? They did all that CG shit, like, to correct all those mistakes from the original Star Wars movies. It would have been cool if they made them all Wookiees. Instead of stupid little teddy bears, man. Be, be, the one thing that bothered me is they brought in... They changed out Anakin's, um... Oh, God. Ghost. Yeah, I know. He dies at the age of whatever. He right. doesn't come Absolutely. back. Yeah. as fucking Hayden Christensen. Yeah. You yeah. just screwed that one guy out of his one claim to fame. Well, you know what? I was the other day that kind of pissed me off. It pissed me off so much. It's like, it doesn't even look like I fit. Because Yoda's not a younger Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> ben Kenobi might as well be Ewan McGregor. Yeah, right. I think and he's not. Well... <laughs> It's even, it's even more fucked up than that because David Prowse was the actor who played Darth Vader in the first, in all the movies he was Darth, the guy in the costume. Yeah. He was a huge dude. Um, and uh, he was, you know, he's also in other movies. He was kind of like a, you know, whatever we need a big guy, let's get David Prowse. And he uh, actually had like a, uh, some kind of a, uh, uh, like, like, what do they call it, like public service announcement. He was like a character, he was from uh, Europe, I don't know where exactly, but um, he uh, was a guy that was about looking both ways before you crossed the street, and he had like a superhero costume, and you know, like he was very well known as this guy. So, uh, Return of the Jedi comes, nobody knows David Prowse, you know, like they know, you know, uh, Mark Hamill, Carrie Fisher, Harrison Ford, you know, um, but he's Darth Vader. Return of the Jedi, they take his mask off. So he's getting excited. He's like, hell yeah, dude. The world's going to know. Uh, timeouts. Just, just, I think the battery went dead or something. Uh, we're killing batteries. I'm killing batteries, man, with my stupid stories. Keep telling the stupid story. We just won't have video for you. Oh, okay, okay. Well, uh. Yeah, well, and I'll have fun writing, making fun of the date. <laughs> <laughs> so, right? so David Cross is like, man, this is my moment. Darth Vader's taking his mask off. The world's going to see. David Cross is Darth Vader. So he's like getting uh, amped up for that. Um, and the whole time they're filming, they're kind of reassuring him, like, yeah, it's going to happen, it's going to happen. But then one day, he hears rumors of a closed set on the Return of the Jedi uh, movie. Um, and uh, he gets kind of nervous, and he goes over there, and I don't think they'd let him in. I think there was a secured area. I, I don't know the whole story, really, but ultimately what happened was they chose a different actor to play Darth Vader with his mask off. So David Prowse got kind of screwed out of that. Yeah, uh, yeah. they actually made a documentary about it. And uh, the director of this documentary reshot the David Prowse scenes, uh, or, or those scenes in the movie, same camera angles, same 
you know, stage, everything, um, with David Prowse instead of, uh, I don't know the actor who played uh, Darth Vader mascot. Yeah. Um, and uh, they made a documentary, but they are not allowed to show the footage cut in with the film. Because, you know, they, George Lucas doesn't want it. George Lucas has a thing with David Prowse where he, he David Prowse would like, talk too much in the interviews and give away too many things that, you know, George Lucas was trying to keep secret. Like, I think he was the guy who uh, was accused of uh, leaking that uh, Darth Vader was Luke's father. Yeah, before Empire. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so yeah, Lucas is a little pissed about that. Obviously, when they still, were Still, still to this day! To get over it, we know. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever, man. It's just a soap opera fucking story. It's a. It's not the soap story. Soap opera space. Yeah, it's the it's the universe that he created. That's just I think that draws people. In, you know, I mean, fuck, dude. Star Wars, Return of the Jedi, Rogue One, uh, Force, Force Awakens. Awakens. All of them, the same fucking story. Ooh, there's a Death Star. We gotta destroy it. You know? Come on, man. But people, they, they, I don't even know if they notice. Because the universe is so fantastic. They're just like, I love that movie. It's like, yeah, you loved it the first time. When you saw it. <laughs> it was based off of an uh, old Western, actually. Like, the concept was basically... The, the Death Star? <laughs> the only thing was the Death Star, but...
I saw it in the theater when I was a kid. Yeah. Yeah. It was scary. It was really, but it was awesome. It yeah. Was really cool. Yeah, I loved it. Um, they're doing one. like a TV series, like a narrative. Yeah, Netflix. Yeah. I'm super That's amazing. Excited. Yeah. Next, Netflix is doing a lot of amazing things. Yeah. I love, I love it that they're pushing, you know, like the uh, industry yeah. in a different direction. You know, like hardly anybody watches cable anymore. I, I don't really. And if you do, <laughs> you have just that one channel that you want. You have to hear online things. So. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing to see all sorts of great people who, who have an idea, a vision, and they want to make a show, and they support that and give them, you know, a, a you know, place where people can come and see. Yeah. Uh, you know, there, there has been some great shows uh, on cable, like Breaking Bad is probably, in my opinion, the best show ever made. It's so good. Uh, yeah, I love it. And then running, sir. Yeah, Better Call Saul is a great spin-off, you know. It's good. And, it, you know, they take a lot of liberties with that show. It's so um, deliberately paced, lots of uh, just long time scenes where you, you kind of just get a sense of what the characters are thinking. You know, they're not saying anything. They're just looking around. And, you know, it's, 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 it's great. You know, it's another level. Then just like, here we are at the scene. Okay, this needs to happen next. Then here we are in the scene, and everybody's like done up, you know, where they, you know, like, I just got out of bed, but you know, makeup is perfect. Yeah. It's or just, I just got out of the show. Yeah, it's, just, not it's garbage, up. you know, and yeah. it's just everything is so like, just like spoon fed, just keep this going, keep it going, you know, and it just irritates me. Yeah. yeah. Jake likes some garbage movies. Yeah. Well, yeah. A lot of people do. I'm not saying like, no, you know. Yeah, he, he deliberately likes. Like the Samurai Cup, Troll 2. Yeah, he likes the bad horror movies, which they are super fun to watch. Which we need to finish Samurai Cop one of these times. Yeah. Troll 2 is, yeah. Uh, one of the worst movies yeah. ever. Well, some people say the worst. I think the box uh, for the film actually says that, doesn't it? <laughs> The there's, a, there's a documentary yeah. called Bad Oh, Bird yeah, Bird. that's right. They made a whole documentary about how bad this movie is. Yeah. It's true. I've seen it. I've seen the documentary. Okay. I haven't seen the, the movie. Yeah. <laughs> I have seen the movie. I have not seen the documentary. Oh, wow. It was really bad. I wish I was inebriated in some way to form a watch it. That's a weird way to say awesome. <laughs> right? Right? Love you, Jake. Jake's my best. Excellent camera pitch. Excellent camera pitch. Yeah, maybe you should get a shot of yourself in the mirror, like a Norman Rockwell, uh, you know, sort of self-portrait. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that okay. picks it up, but I'll zoom in. I don't be like super pixelated. It doesn't look like it. I'll make it look 8-bit. I try to do that for a video once. It didn't work. I was super sad. Okay. So, um, back to music. One, another great story about Gary, Indiana. <laughs> when we showed up to shoot down there, um, we were all staying overnight so we could get the most uh, daylight yep. um, the next morning. So uh, we stopped at this motel, and um, there was this weird sign, like, posted right next to the bulletproof glass, you know, that you're, like, trying to get your key and communicate through. And uh, the sign says, if you do not request a change of room within 15 minutes of checking in, you're, you're stuck with your room, basically. And I'm like, that's a weird sign. Like, what's, what's that all about, you know? So Tony and I were sitting sharing a room, and I'm like, all right, buddy, this way. And we go open the door, and as soon as we open it, this fucking gross, like, piss meat smell comes wafting out of the room. And Tony's just like, I'm not going in there. You know, he's just like, I'm not even going in there. And I'm like, no shit. And I start running down the line. I'm like, it's been 15 minutes yet. It's been 15 minutes yet. <laughs> yeah, they gave us a different room, but I was just like, what the fuck is something is haunted and dead in this room? <laughs> I've seen American Horror Story. There are so many sewn into that mattress. No, that's that's Gary, Indiana. You know, I went the first through. I had to drive through uh, on my way to Detroit, 
And um, I pulled over and Gary to fill up the tank. And there was a car that was like in the middle of the road, like it just caught on fire when somebody was driving. But the car was not on fire. It just looked like it had burned. Like, like it had been burning for hours and it was the fire was done. And there's all this traffic just driving around it. And we're just like, what the hell is this? So we go in and uh, look outside. I see, you know, like the, the cops are there. So I'm like, oh, okay, the cops are going to tow it away. Um, we're in there for about, I don't know, 20 minutes, whatever. And we come back out and no, they're not towing it away. They put a cone in front of it so people can see. Oh, we're going to turn around and like, that hit this car. <laughs> and they, they drove off. <laughs> like they do. Yeah. I was like, man, this place is very depressing. That's <laughs> fascinating. Yeah, it, and fascinating. Yeah. Gary Indiana. Shout out to Gary Indiana. <laughs> Make this into a candy cane. <laughs> 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 holding a candy cane this whole time.